So today we are discussing um, about uh, nucleus. In the last lecture, uh, we discussed uh, cytoplasm, uh, different uh, portions of the cytoplasm, then diff different parts of the uh, cytoplasm, and uh, the cell organelles which are present in the um, uh, cytoplasm. We discussed that cytoplasm is made of cytosol and particles. It has two portions: ectoplasm, endoplasm, and it consists of small uh, organelles uh, which are uh, of two types there are um, organelles which are surrounded by a limiting membrane and then we uh, studied that there are organelles which are not surrounded by uh, any limiting membrane then uh, we discussed that the, uh, the biggest um, cell organelle is a nucleus and today we are starting um, our lecture about the nucleus and after that we will be discussing uh, other cell organelles in detail so let's begin nucleus is the largest it is the largest cell organelle uh, within the um, cell or the cytoplasm and it is occupying about 10 percent about 10 percent of the um, cell if it is 100 percent then about 10 percent is occupied by the uh, nucleus it's not uh, necessary it may be 9 percent or 11 percent or 12 percent but uh, about 10 percent is occupied by the nucleus it is the most prominent and largest uh, cell organelle it is a uh, nucleus is present in all the cells of human body except the red blood cells so only red blood cells uh, has no nucleus otherwise all the cells in the human body or uh, have uh, a nucleus some uh, some nuclei uh, some cells uh, may be having uh, one nuclei uh, uni uh, nucleated cells or in some of the cells even may have uh, more than one nucleus and uh, or nuclei and they are known as uh, multinucleated um, cells then uh, if we consider from the evolutionary point of view all those cells all those cells apart from the human cells uh, which has a nucleus they are considered as a eukaryotes and the cell without any nucleus is considered as a prokaryotes prokaryotes are basically the beginning uh, organisms uh, in the in, from the evolution point of view and those uh, cells without any nucleus were considered as prokaryotes and uh, uh, and as uh, the cells and the organism evolved they developed a nucleus um, that uh, that helped in a lot of functions and then they were uh, evolving and uh, becoming the eukaryotes so that's a separate discussion and that is a very big theory we are not going into that we are just uh, considering about the uh, nucleus that cell with nuclei nuclei are known as eukaryotes and without a nucleus are considered as prokaryotes cell basically a new a nucleus basically has a few components outside the nucleus there is a nuclear membrane as we previously discussed the cell is surrounded by a membrane and different sort of uh, small uh, organelles are surrounded by membrane so nucleus is also surrounded by a membrane that is known as nuclear membrane is the plasma membrane or the cell membrane is made of two portions or as we discussed that uh, they are known as the lipid bilayer similarly the nuclear membrane is also made of two layers nuclear membrane is also made of two layers and between the two layers the space between the two layers of the nuclear membrane is known as perinuclear system perinuclear system it is the space between the uh, two portions or two parts of the nuclear membrane this space between the two membranes of the nuclear uh, membrane the, the space between two layers of the nuclear membrane it is uh, continue continuous with the space between the endoplasmic reticulum we will discuss endoplasmic reticulum in detail it has a lot of functions it, uh, it has a lot of functions we will discuss it in detail but at the moment uh, you should remember that the space between the two layers of the nuclear membrane is continuous with the um, uh, not only with the endoplasmic reticulum but it is also con uh, con uh, in touch with the cytoplasm 
the nuclear membrane also has a lot of pores it has a lot of pores which act uh, which act as uh, gateways or channels to which different uh, substances different substances are coming inside and going outside the nucleus as we discussed previously that um, the plasma membrane or the cell membrane has some sort of proteins which are acting as gateways which help in coming in and going out of so, so, so certain substances similarly the nuclear membrane has some pores or nuclear um, or uh, nuclear pores which we may call it uh, and they are made of different proteins some of the proteins are important and some of the proteins are exportants because they help in bringing in and um, sending out the different substances uh, from the nucleus then within the nucleus there is a nucleolus some of the cells might have uh, more than one nucleo or nucleolus or nucleoli or there, a cell a nucleus may have two or three nucleoli as well a nucleolus is basically made of proteins proteins which uh, I have made uh, through a blue color and uh, RNA we will discuss in detail the RNA and proteins as well but uh, at the moment you should remember that nucleolus is made of protein and RNA which are uh, basically uh, derived from their DNA then uh, inside the nucleus we have a nucleoplasm we have nucleolus and then we have a nucleoplasm nucleoplasm is nothing but it is the a clear fluid or soluble part in the uh, which is a soluble part which is also known as uh, nuclear hydroplasm uh, nuclear hydroplasm and it is present within the uh, boundaries of a nuclear membrane or the space occupying uh, inside the uh, nuclear membrane the nucleoplasm is occupying it is basically present outside the nucleolus and uh, the chromatids nucleolus and chromatids they are uh, surrounded by the nucleoplasm which is uh, a clear fluid most of the time then uh, within the nucleus we have chromatin chromatin is made of dna it is made of dna and some proteins known as histone proteins uh, if uh, we draw the structures uh, these are some proteins known as histone proteins and outside the outside the proteins there is dna which helps in transfer of information it is surrounding the proteins dna is surrounding the histone proteins the histone proteins along with the dna the histone proteins along with the dna it is known as nucleosome it is nucleosome and this nucleosome DNA and histone they are the building blocks for chromosome we will discuss that um, there are uh, about 23 pairs of chromosomes in the uh, autosomes and about 23 single chromosomes in uh, sex chromosome in the human body but most of the cell will contain most of these cells in the human body except uh, sex cells contains 23 pairs of chromosome and all the chromosomes are made of DNA and histone the histone uh, proteins are surrounded by DNA and they are forming the nucleosome so we will discuss it in uh, detail in the coming uh, videos because these are not simple or small topics to be covered in this small lecture we will have separate detailed uh, lecture on uh, lectures on each and every topic uh, but this is just an introduction to the cell cytoplasm and different types of cell organelles now we have uh, discussed the nucleus so let's discuss the different functions of the nucleus 
basically nucleus is like a king of the cell is the king has the control over the country similarly nucleus has control over the different functions of the uh, cell nucleus has a control over mitochondria which is the powerhouse nucleus has control over the uh, golgi apparatus which are making vesicles nucleus has control over the rough endoplasmic reticulum nucleus is helping in forming the rna it is um, it is helping in synthesis of rna and rna goes outside and uh, there are different sorts uh, different types of rna and one of the rna known as messenger rna comes out of the nucleus and brings with it information about the genetics um, and uh, different uh, information about protein synthesis energy synthesis and cell division so uh, what are the functions of uh, nucleus it is uh, controlling the different functions controlling functions of uh, almost all these uh, organelles it is helping in the synthesis of uh, rna then it is helping in providing genetic instructions to all parts of the um, uh, all parts of the cell then nucleus is helping in division every cell has a certain life span when it completes its life span it divides into two daughter cells and the signal when to divide comes basically from the nucleus and inside the nucleus the signal is coming from the dna then uh, nucleus is helping in storing the hereditary information it is helping in storing the hereditary information the information which is to be transferred transferred from parents to offspring and their offspring uh, with the passage of time and the information that the children or the offspring will resemble their parents uh, it this information is basically transferred through dna from the nucleus dna is basically present in the nucleus dna is also present in the mitochondria but most of the time the important portion and uh, the uh, the dna which is basically determining most of the function it is present in the nucleus so let's recap what we studied nucleus is the most important and the largest cell organelle it is present in most cells of the human body's uh, body except red blood cells and uh, cell with cells with nucleus are called eukaryotes while cells without nucleus are known as prokaryotes cell has different components inside the uh, sorry the nucleus cells uh, inside the nucleus um, we have the nucleolus which is made of proteins and um, rna then uh, within the nuclear membrane we have nucleoplasm which is uh, making the nuclear matrix uh, which also has a uh, nuclear matrix nucleotides and some enzymes the soluble part of nucleoplasm is nuclear hyaloplasm so and then we have the chromatin chromatin is nothing but it is the combination of dna and histones or it is uh, chromatin is also known as dna histone complex then the dna and histones are together making the nucleosomes and then they together are making the chromosomes which are helping in transfer of hereditary information then we studied functions of nucleus nucleus is helping in controlling the functions of the cell or functions of the uh, cell organelles it is helping in synthesis of the rna it is helping in genetic instruction providing genetic instructions to the cell it helps in division of the cell and it is helping in transfer of hereditary information hope you have uh, understood the functions of the nucleus Thanks a lot for watching the video.